that as soon as possible. I'd call this meeting of the Columbia County Board of Commissioners to order for this Tuesday, December the 1st, election day once again. You got one hour. Vote in the, the runoffs if you happen to be in the right district. We'll let you figure that out as, as we go along. This time I'd like to ask our Vice Chair, Trey Allen, to offer up our invocation. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we come before you this evening humbly and with great thanks for all the many blessings you have given upon us in the season of thanks, of giving thanks. Thank you for allowing us to practice this great democracy and have the opportunity to affect those leaders that will carry our county and our state forward. We thank you for those that protect us day and night, whether they're soldiers on faraway shores or first responders here amongst us. We ask that this evening you grant this body wisdom in our heads, love in our hearts, and grace in our tongues. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic We do have a quorum tonight with the four seated commissioners uh, present. With all things considered, I'm assuming, Mr. Johnson, we'll have a fifth seat occupied uh, at our December the 15th meeting. <clears throat> we should. Hopefully, we'll have a swearing-in ceremony on the 8th before committees. And that issue should be settled uh, by 7 o'clock this evening. Gentlemen, you have the minutes of our previous meeting on November the 17th in your books. If you're satisfied with their content, we'll accept a motion for their approval. So moved. Second. Any items needing discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Johnson, I have a couple of additions requests to speak to add to the agenda. Do you have any other items that you're aware of? I don't believe so, Mr. Chairman. I think the agenda stands as it's been presented for your approval. Okay. Again, I want to welcome each of you to this meeting of the commission. Remind you that these proceedings are videotaped. If you'd like a copy of the disc, be glad for you to have one. And just make a request to our county clerk, Ms. Crawley. We'll see that one is sent to you. Also remind you that these uh, proceedings can be seen on the county website and currently no longer on WBEK television, as we've mentioned before, that it was bought out by WRDW, and they have not decided whether they're going to carry the meetings or not. I'll also remind you that you're invited to speak to this body, not already on the agenda or have not already filled out a speaker form. We ask that you do that there at the back of the room. Fill them out and bring them up, Ms. Crawley. We'll recognize you at the proper time during the meeting. We start now with our special recognition, which is a good, a good thing for this group to do because it honors a county employee for a great service. And tonight, the December Employee of the Month Stephanie Kingdom of Construction and Facilities Maintenance. Mr. Morris, do you have that? Uh, right. Sir. All those uh, involved with that, would you please come on forward? We have uh, John Paul Stout accompanying uh, Commissioner Morris and our honoree, and also Chip Mobley. It's a great honor to be able to stand before you this evening. Stephanie is also a veteran of Army. Proud to work with her colleague. Thank you, Commissioner Morris. Um, Stephanie was nominated. I, I nominated Stephanie because every single day she has a positive attitude, strong work ethic. Uh, she volunteers for other departments. 
for excellent work. Dignity. Wow. Uh, she has a, a very strong talent for organization. Has uh, improved a lot of the bolstered a few throughout the reorganization. Motto is pride, and especially respect in terms of dedication. Like Stephanie embodies every one. Great honor. It's also a great badge for all of us, our department. As you can see by the agenda, we have several requests to speak. Those that's printed there, we're going to delay until we get to the item that is uh, pertaining to those, those speakers. We do have a couple requests to speak on an item that's on the consent agenda. And at this time, we'll recognize uh, Delia Harrell uh, concerning uh, Hereford Farm Road expansion. And as always, if each speaker would give us your name and address uh, before you begin. Um, question. Um, as far as the arts. Well, would, would you give us your name and address? Okay. Um. I am the chair of that committee and a member of the policy committee, which is the governing board. Now, the county engineers and all others have input into what goes on in the staffs of both Columbia County, Augusta, Richmond, and Aiken counties uh, work in that capacity. Okay. Um, I think I talked to... Mr. Slochter. Yeah, I think uh, on the 17th. Um, now I've got this map, <coughs> and it says... Uh, three lanes, but I've kind of heard that there might be some discussion as to three or five lanes. Is that true? Right. The, the project description says three lanes. However, when we do our study, we do all the traffic counts, we look at turning movement. The traffic study comes back and says that it's required to have a fourth or fifth lane. That's what we want to do. We want to build something today that is obsolete the day we open. We, we had forecast traffic out 20 years. Uh, so we want to build something that's going to last at least. Okay. Um, who who made this map? The Arts Committee. Richmond County actually runs the Arts Committee. We provide data to them, request for projects, and they they prepare the report. Okay, because I mean I live right off of Hereford Farm. I can't really locate where my house is because this. And and I mean whoever created this, did we have to pay for this? Well, I'm sure indirectly we pay all the salaries the taxpayers do for anybody that works with the Arts Committee, but you have to remember that this is just the beginning of the study. This is to go ahead and start the process that the county feels like is necessary to handle the traffic that will be coming with the completion of Riverwatch Parkway. And the data will have to be compiled as we go along, and those maps that come out from... Uh, DOT just gives a rough description of the project. The more detailed plans will be forthcoming with what we will approve tonight. Okay, so on the 17th, um, I'm not exactly sure what transpired. On, I mean, I was here, but I don't remember. I don't know. If, I know you guys took a recess. Is that when you talked about? No, ma'am. I mean, I didn't hear you say anything while I was here because that's when I spoke to you. It was, it was part of the consent agenda on the 17th. What I, what I presented to the committee prior to the 17th was a, a task order to start the process. So uh, they approved $536,000 to do our engineering studies. That's to get us through the environmental stuff, get us through the traffic counts, the survey, kind of understand what we have. What they're looking at tonight is <coughs> locking down a price to do everything. 
based on what they bring back to us, past quarter one, they've guaranteed a maximum price to then design everything based on that study. So Is right now we have nothing. We have, we literally have nothing to show you. What they approved on the 17th was us to study it to then show you what we have. Ms. Harold, this process goes on with every single road project. Right, and then, I mean, and well, that leads to my next question. So like the River Watch project, I mean, I'm just learning about all of this. So I mean, forgive me for being a little ignorant about the subject, but so once everything gets through these committees and gets approved and then it gets turned over to the Georgia Department of Transportation, then it's out of the county's hands? Is that how that works? Depending on the project. Uh, we will handle the design of this, but it'll be subject to DOT approval. And then I imagine we will handle the construction part uh, once the funding is determined. Now, this project for its construction and right away has not even been funded. This is the first step in trying to find out what we really need so that the other steps can be determined. Okay, so today's vote will be for? The engineering portion. Just to create a plan for us to look to begin to look at. We don't know what we don't know. We <coughs> have to start somewhere. Okay, and and not having representation in this degree is irrelevant. Yes, ma'am. It is. It is. And that is because it's a project that was presented to the arts committee to be put in the what is called the. TIP, Transportation Improvement Program, because the county felt like it's necessary at some point in the future. And then that goes to the state, and the state, it becomes in the state Transportation Improvement Program. That's what generates those, those drawings and starts the process. But everybody realizes the need of what's going to occur once the traffic is dumped out at North Bel Air Road from the completion of Riverwatch Parkway. But that now, wasn't the original end of River Watch Parkway, right? I mean, when it was it, originally done, that's not where it was going to dump out. We're, we're getting back into, into way past history, but there was a couple of concepts to run River Watch. One was to cut across some property and wind up at Owens Road. The other was to come the way it is now. When all the public hearings were done, it was decided to bring it in like it is now at McDonald's and extend it on up to North Bel Air Road. That's, that planning has been what, Matt, 15 years ago? Part of the 90s. Well, it's been more than 15 years ago. So that's way water under the bridge. What is happening now is just the completion of that plan because it finally got funded through the Transportation Investment Act. So what you're saying is that uh, this was in the works a long time ago as well? No. No, it... It has come about because of what has happened was planned a long time ago and just funded uh, two years ago. No, I mean the Hereford Farm, you said something about tips and, and that's why it really didn't matter. No, no, we took it to the Arts Committee six months ago, Matt, less. It was last year when we brought up the idea of looking to study this corridor, knowing that River Watch was completed and also once the TIA project was approved by the voters, we knew that the Lewiston Road was being improved, which major bottleneck, so we've got five lanes on both ends and Herbert Farm Road in the middle, so we knew that we needed to do something to complete that corridor. We proposed it to the Arts Committee. The Arts Committee approved it. Now it's a state-funded project. We're involved because we told the state we didn't want them to control it. We wanted to control it, so we asked for priority on this. We took it back from the state, even though it's a state-funded project, so we had local control of the project. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And pertaining to the same subject, uh, Ms. Lori Greenhill. Hi, everybody. Nice to see y'all. Um, actually, Delia asked all my questions, but I want to say one thing because I do live on River Watch. We have sustained a huge loss because of where they placed the road and how they've impacted the people that live there. We have sustained things that you can't imagine if you've never lived through it. 
And I know that y'all have seen the Facebook page and all of the things that I've had to say about the project, and it stems from the elderly that have been impacted, the retired vets, the people that can't speak for themselves because they don't know the questions to ask because the road construction is a very complicated process. So what I really want to leave with you tonight, let's not repeat Riverwatch. Let's make sure that the right thing is done and if homes need to be bought on one side of the road to um, decrease the amount of impacts that will be sustained, please do that because we need to sustain our quality of life in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Gentlemen, we go now to our consent agenda. These are items that have been through the necessary committee process and received the votes, three votes to get put on consent. If you're satisfied with this list as it's stated, we'll accept all of this approval as one vote. So moved. Second. Any discussion of any item? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Go now to our debate agenda. I believe we bring up a, an item that we've had before, but I believe we're starting over. Commissioner Duncan? Yes, sir. Do we, you want to describe the change? or we, We'll get that done if you want to go ahead and make your motion. I make a motion to approve the first reading. <coughs> to amend Ordinance Chapter 14, Animals, Article 1, and General Section 1414, Livestock, Tying of Animals. Second. Now, your agenda shows a second and final reading, but that's not the case. Mr. Driver, will you tell us the, the change to this ordinance so that we having to redo the first reading? Certainly. It was brought to the attention of the uh, Board of Commissioner's Office that uh, we really needed to make an exception for parades. Um, and so we made that exception. Um, anytime that there is a parade or other permanent event where the right-of-ways are closed off to general traffic, um, then we have permitted, um, made that as an exception to this, this prohibition. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. We would go now to something that we very seldom do because most of these are done at committee. We are at this time opening a public hearing for the Vision 2035, the 20 year comprehensive plan update document. I'd like to ask Mr. Andrew Strickland to come forward and, and conduct this uh, public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I will say this is, this is an unusual event because you're correct, Planning Commission and, and these always typically handle public hearings. This is a special event for tonight. Um, the reason we're having this public hearing actually deals with a resolution you'll consider later in the agenda tonight, uh, which is a transmittal resolution for our comprehensive plan update, which is in 2035. Uh, as you've been aware, this document uh, has, has gone through several, uh, several public meetings, several visioning sessions with um, almost a thousand members of our community, um, which is excellent. Uh, community involvement in terms of comprehensive lucky to, sometimes to get uh, a, a few dozen people to come out for, for similar things so this was a, a very well publicized very well attended document uh, process um, just briefly the, uh, the document does set a, a vision for the uh, future development of Columbia County which is a very a very hot topic as we're seeing already tonight there are lots of moving pieces, lots of moving pieces in the future as well. So uh, this, this document will hopefully provide some guidance a as we move forward through this time. Um, uh, this transmittal resolution is not the final adoption. Uh, it'll actually uh, allow us and instruct staff to transmit this document to the Regional Commission uh, and then the, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs for a 40-day review period. Um, at the end of that 40-day re review period, we're, we're hoping and trust our, our consultants enough to say that um, there will be very little comment, uh, if any, on our document and just jinx it. But it's been a great document, very, very well attended, very well involved, um, and uh, look forward to your approval. Thank you. This, this is a public hearing, 
do we have any public comments concerning the Vision 2035 comprehensive plan? Well, hearing none, we will close the public hearing, and this item will be brought up uh, a little bit later in the meeting. Mr. Duncan, would you uh, continue with your Yes, Mr. Agenda? Chairman. I make a motion to table the request to rezone 113 South Old Bel Air Road from R1 to PUD to the first meeting in January. Second. We do have with us Mr. Bobby Maybaum, who is the developer on this project. Mr. Maybaum, would you like to make any comments? Okay. <coughs> any further discussion to table this until the first meeting in January? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the request to adopt a master sign plan for multiple parcels at the intersections of William Pugh Parkway and Lewiston Road and currently zone C2, subject to the conditions enumerated in the November 19, 2015 Planning Commission report. Second. And I believe we have a gentleman that would like to speak about this, uh, John Rogue, Rogie. Did I mispronounce that so bad he didn't recognize his name? Well, apparently not. So I don't guess we have that, uh, that presentation. Any further discussion on this item? <coughs> All in favor, can raise your right hand. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the request to rezone one parcel at 605 Furious Ferry Road from R2 to P1 and a portion of a second parcel at 541 Furious Ferry Road from PDD to P1, subject to conditions enumerated in the November 19th, 2015 Pl Planning Commission report. Second. We have a request from Mr. Dennis Trotter to speak. Would you continue, like to speak? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Dennis Trotter, 2796 Henry Street. Um, in favor of the uh, rezoning petition for these two simultaneous rezones we're doing for to uh, kick off the development of a project for uh, anchored by Savannah River Dermatology uh, for a 9,600 square foot medical office building there that uh, we're rendering to see in the way. Um, we have um, worked diligently with the um, Westlake Homeowners Association to ensure compatibility um, with. Um, the development since this is an important arterial for the county and uh, obtained a, 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 a support from the HOA now, along the way and prior to the Planning Commission meeting by enhancing our um, buffer from 20 feet to 30 feet up against uh, Westlake that would be applied uniformly across the depth of, across the rear frontage uh, rear property across the uh, all the parcels that are being rezoned tonight. So 25 feet of that 30 would be undisturbed, five feet would be planted, and um, uh, um, architecture on the building you can see there also be governed by the um, Pierce Ferry uh, Overlay District, so subject to staff approval on that as well when the final plans come in. Uh, so anyway, we're really excited. I think this is a set the tone for some really upscale uh, medical development along that corridor of Pierce Ferry. And, um, be very uh, compatible with the residents in the rear. It's a uh, unintensive use, uh, limited hours, not a whole lot of nights and weekends at all. And um, anyway, big investment for uh, that that portion of the county. So happy to uh, answer any questions that commissioners may have. You're okay with the conditions imposed by planning and zoning? Absolutely. Uh, that was done as a sign of good faith to the Westlake uh, HOA, and um, happy to give them that concession as well as. Uh, uh, we're going to we've made some extra measures to uh, enhance the uh, stormwater situation out there too. Any questions of Mr. Trotter? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the request to rezone a portion of one parcel at five. 41 Furious Ferry Road from PDD to P1 subject to conditions enumerated in the November 19, 2015 Planning Commission report. Second. Any discussion of this item? Make sure we don't have anybody to speak on that one. No discussion at all? 
part of the same. All, right. All in favor? Okay. I make a motion to approve the request to rezone a 0.59 acre portion of one parcel at 111 Devant Street from S1 to C2 <coughs> with a condition used for auto and truck sales. Second. Any discussion of this item? All in favor? Make a motion to approve the request to rezone four parcels located at 309, 311, and 313 Fierce Ferry Road from R3 to S1 for retirement, retirement community subject to the conditions enumerated in the November 19, 2015 Planning Commission report. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Make a motion to disapprove the request for a change of conditions for one parcel at 316 Pierce Ferry Road to remove the existing condition requirements access to be only off Twin Lakes Drive. I make a motion to approve waiving the fee associated with the application. Second. And we have one disapproval here because of the access to Pierce Ferry Road not being recommended by traffic staff and DOT and a return of a double charge on a waiver. Did we get a second with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Any discussion of this? Let me get, I, I wrote that down. Let me make sure I got that right. Well, that's advice. No, I think you have it right. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. right. We could have done two motions, but we got it in one, so. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? All in favor? Please raise your right hand. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance from section 90-144, placement of buildings and structures at 3693 Bay Point to permit an eight-foot wall on the property line to match the existing wall. Second. We do have a request from Richard Severson to speak on this item. Could you come forward, please? Richard Severson, 3691 Bay Point, Fort Elijah Westlake. Thank you for me, uh, providing the opportunity to provide comments and concerns related to the request of variance. Six foot uh, high code for, fi uh, for fences helps uh, maintain and provides uniformity of character and attractiveness to the community and to our courtyard neighborhood. When this standard is altered, these value features begin to be uh, compromised. Randy Floyd and for Vicki and Vicki proposal to build a white stucco wall eight foot high and approximately 74 feet long on the property line, dividing our properties in parallel to my current fence. My fence was built in February 1995 and complies with it is a six foot fence and 60 feet long. It has five pillars and there are 19 inch, the pillars are 19 inches off the property line and the fence is 25 inches off the property line. Floyd proposal would create a very confined space on my property with only one opening, 70 foot, 74 point, or 74 foot line for entry and exit. The site of the proposed wall would be an albatross to my family we would have a view from our patio and our yard, two feet of white stucco wall above our own uh, fence. This uh, view would be on site. Variance would also be visible from the street. Most importantly, I request the following is a six or eight foot tall uh, high wall would allow to be on or near property line, opposite from my existing fence. Safety. Floyd proposal proposed fence with safety hazard form of a very small workspace on my property between the two parallel fences. The space would be 19, 25 inches, six foot high, and for 74 on my property. 
only one small infant would be available at the end of his 74th bout of tennis. This would not be enough space to safely perform hard work and mowing and edging. I'm 75 years old, in all areas of my property. Voids are permitted to grow in front of the wall. Yard, wood, yard work in its confined area fences become dangerous. Hazard poses a threat not only to me, my family, my health. Also, if I or someone becomes injured while working on on my property before all, there would be no way to get the injured person out or extracted in a timely manner. Way of getting treatment would also create a liability issue. Next item, impede access to my property. Proposed wall would impede access to my property because the walls are for maintaining purposes by creating one very small entrance, 19 at one end of the uh, 74 long fence. This would require that I or any other worker slide through the uh, opening sideways, getting maintenance equipment <coughs> either into the confined area through the small space, very cumbersome, especially during as would operating any equipment in the small confined space. That small confined space would also children are typically attracted to a type of this type of play area. Not aware of that. In conclusion, I request not create Section nine, building an eight-foot uh, wall on the property line with foundation, supported by the issues I've mentioned. Very safe. I would also request commissioners provide a statement not supported. Supporting in the same location. Safety is just as many hazards created from all Provided some uh, pictures. Can we rearrange these pictures? First one just to show the property. General area. The upper left hand corner shows the general area of the fence. Center of the center of that is high breast fence. Here on the right, picture from our view of the patio. What we would see. Um, two foot of a stucco wall above that fence. Um, <coughs> mind if I approach the screen? Oh, go ahead.
I think that was prior to our fence regulations. I think that was done prior to our current fence regulations. Is that not true, Mr. Strickland? I'd be glad to thank you very much for your time, consideration. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, the, how long has the wall been there <coughs> that you currently see? My wall or the white there's one? There's already one there. About 10, 10 years. So the Boy, excuse me. Go ahead. Back to the light. <coughs> no, the white one that's, that's there. Right there. How long has that been there? So that's been there 10 years. Well, the plan shows the toast columns to be 8 foot 4 inches. Is that correct, Drew? Plan submitted. 7 4 to the wall and 8 4 to the columns. But so that's been there at least, okay? <coughs> I understand. Mr. Floyd would have to answer that. What I did uh, check with was Westlake uh, Property Owners Association, and they don't have any records of approval back. I don't believe they have one for that. That stuff was there. Have they approved the one that's before the commission? Pardon? Yes, it says it was approved by the Westlake Property Owners Association. That is true, correct? Yeah. It's in the document say that it was approved by the homeowners. If I could ask a question. Sure. Did you build what you call your fence? Did you build that fence or was it there when you bought the house? Karen did. I was just curious why it was off the property line. Not, Not on the property line? If you look at the fifth paragraph down, it says extension has already been approved by the Westlake Homeowners Association. For the new part, the new fence. Yes. I was referring to the old. Yeah, and I, I was asking about the old one because you've actually been looking at one for 10 years, part of one at least. I don't think they are aware of the safety consideration and the impedance of my, of my property. I don't believe that Westlake property owners. I think. The, the fact of the matter is that they have a right to do a six-foot fence anyway, correct? No questions asked. And they just want the fence to match what's already there. And you're talking about going from a six-foot fence to 7-4 as far as the fence and then to 8-4 as far as the periodic columns. So I don't know what we could do to satisfy the condition that you'd like to see with no fence at all? Like to not have a uh, hazardous work environment created by a fence on an unreasonable request, regardless of on the property line and on the property line. Uh, 
essence of what you're talking about at 60. Yes. So there's going to be a, a path to this. Thank you. Have you discussed with neighbor about putting some type of gate block access to that alley? Call it that. Keep <laughs> children and dogs and things out. Is that an option? Would you? Uh, no, I, I would tell the, the, the kids are going to drop the note. <coughs> Fairly hazardous. Can you take it back <coughs> to the one picture with a go the back? No, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, right there. I, I, I talked to Andrew earlier today. So there's, I realize maybe it's an optical illusion. Is there any way to bring the fence to my left? and bring it down the driveway line. It just looks like there's room there. It would give more of a gap. Put the fence. It's going to be tough to get a footing in there if you get much closer to the, the driveway. Mr. Severson, we spent 14 minutes out of a five-minute allotment, so I think we need <laughs> any further questions of the. There's no way to move the fence over back on their property. I mean, even if it's not totally, I mean, even if it's <clears throat> one. I'm asking. I'm not an engineer. I think you'd have to go out and survey it and see how much of the driveway you'd have to tear up. Any other comments? Then we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor of the motion as presented, please raise your right hand. Okay, next item. Make a motion to disapprove the request for a variance section 90-53 list of lot structure requirements at 5310 Brandywine Court. We have a request from Mr. Cliff Russell to address this item. Good evening. Good evening. We requested a hardship variance, the opportunity to uh, build the home outside of what has been set on record to be a, a flood area. The lot has uh, a lot of elevation change from the road. Um, the current um, zoning requires a, a, a 40 foot setback, which would put an, an 18 foot elevation change between the road and the house. And we have pictures of the, of the creek flooding up very close to where the house would be with that. And then during the previous hearing, some neighbors uh, also shared with us that they had seen that creek flood significantly. Uh, they actually said it got to the road, but I don't, I don't think that's possible. But um, if we were permitted to uh, stay within the county's R1 zoning, which requires 65 feet from the middle of the road, um, we could have the house as close as 13 feet from the property line. Um, so any 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 amount that we can get the house out of the structure, uh, out of the out of the flood zone. Um, would qualify for the hardship variance and as understood to me that we would need to prove that there's no other way to build the structure and, and based on what has been shared with us and what we've seen personally every every couple of feet every three feet of elevation change will help us make the house a more safe dwelling thank you I believe in this situation the majority of the houses along that road are well set back from the road Now, for his request, how close would it bring it to the street? Asking for property line. 20 feet. That would be 
30 feet from the road, and this is, I was quoting, uh, 65 feet from the middle of the road is the R1 zoning, right? So that would actually put us 13 feet, what the county permits in R1 zoning, 13 feet from the property line. We're asking for 20, which I would still have a, an 18, I mean, I'm sorry, a 12-foot elevation change to deal with. But there's nothing there that's anywhere near that close. Hmm. Any questions, gentlemen? But is there anything that I've done, uh, I guess, not presented to the committee as far as being able to prove that building the house in another place or another position um, in order to satisfy some other way to do it? I guess that was, that was the point brought up in the last meeting is just in order to qualify for hardship, you know, show me how we could do it differently or, you know, that maybe that we're asking for something that's unreasonable. I understand the, um, the aesthetics part of it, and we want to comply with that also. We've, we've talked with planning about, you know, landscaping and so forth, and we're happy to comply with that. But as far as just the factual writing of the, of the hardship, is there any other way or something that I'm not understanding that would qualify it? Andrew, that's probably a question for, for you in planning and zoning. Have you, did you all discuss that prior to? There's not an HOA, by the way. Really from a, from a site plan. No other houses in there. <clears throat> kind of mm -hmm. That would also apply in the, in the face of, of some sort of, of hardship qualification. I mean, it, it clearly <coughs> states if there was another way to do it, then we should do that. But I don't. Well, see I, I believe I believe you're allowed to build in the in the floodplain if you build it to right elevation. Is that correct? So you could raise the floor plan of this house and build it anywhere on the lot, right? Fair enough, that was not brought up at the last meeting. Well, this house is built all along the Savannah River, but they gotta be at a certain height, so if it floods over, uh, the house itself is not flooded. Yeah, I just <coughs> wasn't aware that they were actually within the, the area that it could flood over the banks. But I assume they were at an elevation that made them safe. Yeah, and I think you could do the same thing here, couldn't you? And put it in the proper location? Okay, any further questions? Thank you for your time. Well, I think there are other options available, but and I agree that we shouldn't, you know, push everything forward in this one situation where everybody's built so far back already. Other discussion? We have a motion to second. All in favor? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 15 1191, transmittal for vision 2035. Second. Uh, this is to pass this on to the regional commission for their review and to create the comment time. Okay. Yeah. I'd just like to compliment Andrew and his staff and the county, the participants in this uh, an arduous task, very important look forward to the final product after it's uh, under review. Thank you, Andrew. The uh, statistical data that I went over today is, is kind of mind-boggling. Yes. I mean, it's the I'm growth scared. of the county and projected growth is unbelievable. Other comments? All in favor? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the first reading for resolution 15-1186, Street Light District for Baldwin Place Resolution 15-1187, Streetlight District for the Sunbury Loop at Bar uh, Bartram Trail, and Resolution 15-1188, Streetlight District for Collins Park. Second. 
these items have had the public hearing and all the necessary paperwork to create street light districts. Any further comments? All in favor? Mr. Driver, I see no legal matters listed. We have no legal matters tonight. We do have some land acquisition items for executive session. Uh, if you're so inclined, we'll proceed to do those in open session. Mr. Duncan? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve $1,693 to Jerry David Brauner, parcel number 077E083, to obtain permanent and temporary easement for Bristol Road Sewer Replacement Project. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Chairman, I make a motion to approve $274 to Anthony L. Coleman, parcel number 052A001, for the permanent and temporary easement for Baker Place Waterline Project. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Do you have any additional requests to speak? Call. I believe we had one, Mr. Chairman, that was not brought to our attention. If I ask if there's a public comment, I believe there is one. Okay. Would you come <coughs> forward, please? <clears throat> Do we have a sheet on uh, this record of this? Okay. She got it with her. I'll take it. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't understand what y'all are doing about the livestock. I've heard some things and I'm not clear on what y'all are wanting to ban. <clears throat> All I saw was a headline that said saddle up and ride out or something <laughs> like that. Are you wanting to do or what's going on? That was initiated by some complaints and I had several of them personally while at the park, a situation <laughs> where there was a couple of riders inside of Amos Town Center Park around a lot of children and one horse was apparently rather unruly and it was never our intent to have that kind of activity in Amos Town Center Park. Now we have had several requests that we've not acted on about neighborhoods where horses are ridden and up and down some major roads. But what we did tonight according to Mr. Driver and what we said was that we made an amendment so not to affect any horses in Christmas parades or things like that that have been adequate plans. The, the thing we did initially was for the safety of the people in a location that you would normally not expect horse activity. Never not expected horse activity. This is the first town I've seen that didn't have any horses running around that, you know, people riding on them. It was, it's great transportation. Um, in, in the proper place. And where would that be? Well, in an open area where there's not children that could be hurt or not in a park that's set up for an entirely different purpose. And probably not on a five-lane highway. Yes. Interstate's not a good place to ride a horse. I wouldn't want to ride one on it. No. <laughs> but I think that these were just a couple of people that had a horse bad name. It's kind of like people that are talking on their cell phones while they're driving. You can't get them to move through a red light because they don't see it. And, I mean... <clears throat> it, was not, it was not directed at those people. It was directed at the activity they were engaged in at that particular time. But we have horse trails in Wildwood Park. There are other areas. There's a lot of stables around. Yes, there, there's riding areas. Get rid of their horses, right? No, no, not at all. Okay. We're not. We're not restricting <coughs> animals in the, the Evans Town Center zone. We're just saying not on the roadway or in the in the right of way or in the park. This oh. area, though. and it's only yeah. It's but only in in. Are and the dogs well, it's, well, it's, it's a little that's bit bigger. correct. It's within a few a blocks. Bigger. What we call the Evans Town Center overlay, ma'am. It's just within a few blocks of this area of the the major metro area of the county. It's not the entire county. Certainly not the rural areas or anything. I think Bill would have an issue. Yeah, I think District 4 would have a real issue. With I think District 4 would have a real issue of banning horseback riding in the rural area of the county that I represent. You would have a real issue with banning it? Yes. yes. It would not be banned. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, you just made <laughs> no, ma'am. This was. This is again only for this immediate area around the, the park and the area. Just what's in this circle. Yes, ma'am. The city, 
Okay. The metro area of the county. And that doesn't include the place that's down here on Evans Lock Road? Actually, it does, I believe. Right, horses. I believe the resolution is written to, to uh, on only road. include public roadways, yes. public property. So any private property that lays within there, you can still ride on. You just can't ride it on public park property or in a public park inside that circle. Well, I would like to have a request. Sure. <laughs> okay. Why don't y'all build us up <laughs> with some trails in it and save some of these trees? Oh. Even that park <clears throat> out there, it's so hot. You go to any kind of event, y'all didn't leave any trees. Not, there weren't any trees. It was a field. It's it's hard to see a concert the through past. the trees, though. So you have to have the open area. It's hard. Wildwood Park at the lake does allow, as the chairman said, does allow does have horse trails. Can't and, drive to yeah. it. Oh, can you ride there? <laughs> Not on public ride. Not, Not the inside the over. You gotta have through. You can't ride through here. That one. <laughs> yeah. But you won't let me on the road to get there. <laughs> Just have to walk around. <laughs> I mean, seriously, um, Aiken has got a horse park, the <coughs> largest horse park limits probably in the United States. And, and they are very famous for their horse uh, Well, horses were here. Races when I, and all. When I was a little girl, my parents had friends over here, and we lived in Belvedere. <coughs> and it, when we came over here to visit, they had horses and ponies, because that's when I first got on the pony. And that was over here, at, like around where Carolina Pottery is. Yes, ma'am, but spend the night. Things things do change. You might consult with Commissioner Morris about locations in District Four, where horses can be ridden anywhere. In where? District Four, Appling. Oh. You know how far that is away from my house. I I live right here in Evans. Well, this might be time to move. I don't know. It could be. But see, that's not very nice because well. y'all have accommodated the bike riders. And you've accommodated the joggers, you've accommodated the dogs in the park, and you've accommodated for concerts, but you don't want to accommodate for horses? No, ma'am, not in a crowded area. Simple as that. Stop making it so crowded. <laughs> Thank you very much. So much traffic the now. The District 4 is not crowded. And that little house that, that that man showed, that now he's going to, what, put trucks and cars on to sell? How many trees you got to get rid of to, to take care of that? Actually, that's an empty lot also already, and that, that is behind it, an existing car lot. A house with a <coughs> bunch of trees. I mean, y'all may think I'm being funny, but I'm no. serious. People love their horses just as much as people love their dogs. Ma'am, we understand, but you're well past your five minutes, so thank you for coming and sharing your comments. Okay, so can I come again? Yes, ma'am, anytime. <laughs> thank you. First and third Tuesdays. I'd like to welcome Ruster Wilder once again. Tom Snyder, part of our tax assessor board, along with Charles Sharp. Glad to see you all here tonight. The election is two minutes away. I don't know if you can get to a precinct or not. Russell, I guess you're anxious to see that result, too. Yeah. Any other business to come before this meeting of the commission? None that I know of. I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Second. I think that's highly in order. All in favor? We are adjourned. Run across the street, sir, or are you going somewhere else? Yep.